Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. So the defense attorneys for the Oath Keepers leader, Elmer Stewart Rhodes, rested their case last week. Now attorneys for the other Oath Keepers members are going to take over Thomas Caldwell, Jessica Watkins, Kelly Meggs, and Kenneth Harrelson. So they will have a chance to call witnesses of their own. Um, Here's what's happened since my last update. Rhodes' testimony wrapped up. Uh, The prosecutor shared damning messages that he sent to his members. Some of them read, quote, get squared away and ready to fight. The final defense is us and our rifles. We're not getting out of this without a fight and quote, conquer or die. So these statements are important because they fly in the face of Rhodes' assertion that he never intended for his members to enter the Capitol, never intended them for them to obstruct Congress. And the prosecutor reminded everybody that Rhodes also wrote that if he, meaning Trump, quote, fails to act, we will. We will have no choice. And here's the thing. Rhodes keeps claiming that his members went off mission, right? He keeps saying this, oh, they went off mission. Other people keep saying that too, right? Entered the Capitol of their own accord. But you're the leader. He's purportedly the leader of this group. So where's the evidence to show that he was pissed that they took matters into their own hands? Where's the evidence to show that he scolded them or took issue with them, or told them to get out out after he found out that they went inside. The defense didn't provide one shred of evidence in written or or verbal form that Rhodes took issue with his members during or even after they illegally entered the Capitol. You know, and there was also a bit of drama last week. Oath Keepers vice president, Greg McWhirter, was scheduled to testify last Tuesday, but apparently he had a heart attack after he boarded the plane to D.C. So he had to be taken off the plane and hospitalized. And McWhirter's testimony is pretty crucial to the defense because he became an FBI informant after joining the Oath Keepers. So that detail was supposed to remain under seal, but someone released it to the public, which caused a bit of a brouhaha between the opposing counsel. And for some reason, the prosecutor chose not to call McWhorter as a witness. In fact, other cooperating members of the group were also left off the government's witness list, including three people who had pleaded guilty to seditious conspiracy. So one Oath Keepers member who did testify last week was Michael Green. If he sounds familiar, it's because I did an arrest video on him. He's a January 6th defendant who's charged with very serious felonies, including conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding. His trial will take place next year. But on the witness stand in this trial, the prosecutor questioned him about him being a mercenary. And that's something he doesn't deny. And then the prosecutor suggested that Green was paid to fight in, quote, Rhodes' war at the Capitol. So Green said, no, this wasn't a war. He actually compared with the Capitol attack to the BLM riots, as they all try to do. So the prosecutor then played a recording of Rhodes telling his members that they needed to be, quote, willing to die. And then Green again tries to downplay the evidence as just, quote, how Stewart talks. And then he compared Rhodes to the, quote, old guy at the barber shop and basically said, oh, you know, he uses a lot of hyperbolic language. He, he just spouts off, but he doesn't really mean it. So then the prosecutor once again brings the receipts. The prosecutor displayed messages sent by Green to another Oath Keepers member And he tells this other member, quote, Stewart believes we're on the brink of a civil war. I can see how it would happen. A lot of people are upset about this election. And now that there is proof, people will be pissed by the results. So and for the YouTube moderators, let me confirm there's zero proof that the election was stolen. So it's B.S., Um, Green also was talking out of both sides of his mouth at the trial. He tried to say that if anyone was to start a civil war, 
it wasn't going to be the Oath Keepers. And to try to make his point, he noted that in December, you guys probably remember there was this million MAGA march in D.C. And he said an Oath Keepers leader, quote, pulled a whole team off the street because he didn't want a physical conflict with Antifa. But then he also said that the reason the Oath Keepers took the weapons to the Virginia Hotel and set up their quick reaction force for the Million MAGA March was because Rhodes thought that Antifa might attack and try to drag Donald Trump out of the White House. So which is it? You don't want a conflict with them or you're bringing weapons because you think you might have to kill them. Still, I do think the defense probably scored some points last week with the jurors because Green was named as the operations leader for the Oath Keepers on January 6th. Rhodes' attorney hammered home that Green never gave a command to any of the members to enter the building or to stop the certification of the electoral votes. And then Green also told the jury he wasn't aware of any plan. And when they tried to say, well, you know, was it implied? His response was, quote, nothing's implied in the military. And he, you know, made the point that you could get killed if you just assume things. That statement was made to refute earlier testimony by Oath Keepers member Jason Dolan, who had told the jury that he believed there was an implicit agreement to obstruct the certification of Biden's win. And another Oath Keepers member named Lee Maddox also testified on behalf of the defense. He tried to claim that the Oath Keepers were just there to listen to Trump's speech. I mean, given all of the written and recorded evidence in this case, Maddox's statement is laughable. Um, he also tried to say that, you know, all of their bombastic, violent rhetoric was just, quote, locker room talk. Gee, I wonder where he got that from. And then Maddox also called January 6th a, quote, good day. Um, two other Oath Keepers were warned that if they should testify, if they wanted to testify, they could, but that the government was not going to grant them immunity and that if they said something that, you know, might be illegal, that they did, they admit to something, some illegal activity, they risked prosecution. So one of the men named Dario Aquino, he decided against testifying and he invoked his Fifth Amendment rights. The other man was Rick Jackson. He chose to testify anyway. He's one of the guys who you probably remember. He drove to the Capitol in a golf cart. Um, there's no evidence, though, that he entered the Capitol. So it doesn't seem that he implicated himself in anything. But you never know. We'll see. Stuff has been coming out. And the sedition hunters know all. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I will let you know when I hear more as this whole thing progresses. But uh, it's looking like it's going to wrap up this week and it will go to the jury before Thanksgiving. So thank you so much for watching and listening. Please like, share, subscribe. Please donate if you can through the super thanks on YouTube, um, through the link in my bio on TikTok. Really appreciate all of you and all of your support. So take care and I will talk with you soon. <music>